hey welcome back to the course so in the previous lecture what we did was we just explored about uh, the MCU block diagram in the case of uh, STM32 uh, F4 series of microcontroller as well as we also uh, explored the block diagram a high level block diagram of TI's uh, TIVA series of microcontroller and as I said if you have any other microcontroller from uh, different vendors then you just go and check in your data sheet or reference manual to understand the block diagram okay it's because I cannot cover all the uh, microcontroller which is there in the market right I can only point you to the generic concept so which you can leverage to understand your microcontroller and as I compared these two block diagrams they are almost same but there are some minor differences but the architecture is almost same okay great so now in this lecture what we'll do is we'll just discuss some question and answers okay so these are some of the thought provoking questions okay on uh, whatever we learned so far okay and the reference for this question is uh, stm32 f 46 re microcontroller okay great so now let's go to the question one by one now first question is it true that system bus is not connected to flash memory so take five seconds to think this answer. The answer is true, isn't it? So if you check in the section embedded flash memory interface uh, in the reference manual, uh, you see this uh, diagram, okay? So here you can see that flash is actually connected, okay, to I code and D code okay so you can see that this line S bus is not going to flash memory okay so that proves that in this microcontroller the flash is actually connected to uh, the cortex core over I code and D code and the system bus is not connected to flash memory that's true now the second question processor can fetch instructions from SRAM over i code bus interface true or false so what is your answer for this okay so for a time being i will say this answer as false okay but that is actually not true okay there are some advanced techniques by which you can make your processor to fetch instructions from SRAM over the I code bus that's possible that we'll see later okay so let's not worry about that but for a time being I will say false okay system bus can operate at the speed up to 180 megahertz so the answer for this is here okay 180 megahertz that's true okay the cortex processor can run up to uh, you know speed of 180 megahertz okay great so that means the system bus can also run up to the speed of 180 megahertz that's true okay great so now SRAMs are connected to system bus true or false that's correct right the SRAMs they are actually connected okay to the system bus over this bus matrix don't, don't worry I will explain the bus matrix later okay in the next lecture okay so now next question APB one bus can operate at the speed up to 180 megahertz so what's your answer for this can APB one bus operate at the speed of 180 megahertz that's not true I think because APB one bus as they mentioned here it can only run up to 45 megahertz so that means okay so this is false let's say I have a peripheral whose data sheet says that its operating frequency or speed must be above 95 megahertz okay can I connect that peripheral via APB two bus so here there is a device okay or a peripheral okay which must run at 95 megahertz okay to behave properly then can you connect that peripheral to processor via APB2 bus
So what is the maximum frequency of APB2 bus? Maximum operating frequency of APB2? It is 90 megahertz, right? So then it's not possible, okay? You cannot connect it. Now, next question. Processor can fetch instructions, okay, as well as data simultaneously from SRAM. True or false? So just think about this answer. Can processor fetch instructions and data simultaneously? No, right? It's not possible. This is false, right? Because okay there is only one bus okay which connects to sram so it has to first read the instructions then it has to read the data right simultaneously it cannot read it right so that's not possible so processor can fetch instructions as well as data simultaneously from flash true or false so what's your answer this is true right it can fetch simultaneously because it has separate bus called i code and d code see right all right so now next question what is the maximum h clock okay so now this is repeated so what is the maximum h clock value of your mcu so in this case i'm considering this mcu okay so what is the maximum h clock value All right, so remember that H clock is a notation or abbreviation used to describe the clock frequency or operating clock frequency of the HP bus, okay? So if you go back to our diagram here, okay? So this is a HP bus, okay? That is HP one bus, which has the capacity to run maximum speed up to 180 megahertz. And we have also HP two bus, which also has the capacity to run at maximum at 180 megahertz okay you can even lower the frequency okay so that's possible okay and the current operating frequency of the hb bus is denoted by the term h clock so now the answer for this question is 180 megahertz now the next question what is the maximum p1 clock value of your mcu the p1 clock is actually the abbreviation uh, used to denote the clock frequency the operating clock frequency of the apb1 bus okay it's it's operating frequency is actually denoted by p1 clock okay so so p1 clock maximum p1 clock is 45 megahertz right and uh, the p2 clock means the operating clock frequency of the apb2 bus okay so that is the maximum uh, value you can use for p2 clock is 90 megahertz right great so now next question gpios and processor communicate over hp1 bus true or false okay so where is your gpio this is your gpio okay and where is your processor this is your processor so they both communicate over hp1 bus that's true because it is connected to hp1 bus and further from here to here the connection is actually through system bus so finally this hp1 one bus uh, goes and connects to s bus okay and please remember that finally everybody should go and connect to system bus through the bus matrix okay so bus matrix is a you know your traffic controller kind of guy who actually uh, decides okay uh, which bus to connect for a given uh, point in time okay that means bus matrix will actually serialize the access so the the answer for uh, this question is gpio connects to arm processor over hp1 bus via the system bus to the processor okay so usb otg and processor communicate over hp2 bus true or false that's true because here is a usb otg peripheral okay that is actually connected to hp2 bus and finally it is connected to a bus matrix then it will uh, talk to the cortex processor over system bus okay great that's true right now next question usb otg and gpios can communicate to processor concurrently or simultaneously is it true or false a uh, very interesting question
So my answer would be uh, false because it has to be serialized, right? So this guy and this guy finally, even though they have uh, connected to different HB buses, so the moment they want to talk to system bus, the bus matrix will serialize the access, okay? It's not possible to communicate simultaneously, okay? It's not possible. Processor can talk to flash memory and SRAM simultaneously. So what's your answer for this? The processor, here is a processor, can talk to the flash and uh, the SRAM simultaneously. That's true, right? Because there are dedicated buses, right? Okay. The processor can talk to flash over I code and decode and at the same time it can talk to the SRAM or system bus. So what's the problem? It can do that, right? So now that leads to our next discussion that is HB bus matrix. So that actually uh, serializes, uh, you know, communication between the controller and the various peripherals on different buses. Okay, great. So now I hope you understood. And uh, if you have any questions, then please raise your questions. And um, I will see you in the next lecture.